I noticed when cooking, I rarely use a traditional spatula. Maybe because I'm often trying to make things like one pot because, you know, doing dishes is just not my happy place. When removing ingredients to reuse the skillet or simply just plating one of your meals, you know, one of those, hold on, one of these silicone guys really help ensure nothing's left behind. You can check it out in this clip right here that there's almost zero evidence left behind, which also helps when it comes to cleaning it. Today's recipe is listed on my website as chickpea salad. Chickpea salad as it's intended to be enjoyed cold. Although one of my favorite things about this recipe is it also can be enjoyed warm. Other benefits include being high protein, anti-inflammatory, and you can pull it together in 20 minutes. I guess as long as you have your chickpeas ready, or you're using canned. We're starting our recipe out with searing and seasoning our chickpeas. Now, you could use another neutral bean option in there if you like, but I don't think it will do the same justice. If I was to swap it, I would go with cauliflower and a roasting method. That would just crush the high protein factor in there, but it would be really tasty and low calories. Searing the chickpeas are pretty straightforward. I would just consider using an anti-inflammatory oil. This way you can kind of keep things consistent. Olive oil and avocado oil are some of my favorites with olive probably taking the top for me. In the first set of seasonings, I use cinnamon and cloves to help develop the flavors a bit more. Although these flavors already exist within the garam masala. You could leave those out to help shorten the seasoning list or because the garam masala represents those flavors enough for you already. Since we're gonna be adding our seasonings directly into the skillet, just make sure you keep stirring. This way you don't leave anything behind to burn. Have you ever heard of sumac onions? Well, in this next step, we are sumacking everything and adding more seasonings to complement our sumaciness. So get the chickpeas out into your salad mixing bowl along with all the goodness left behind and insert the garlic and onions into the skillet. We're not cooking these very long, but I do typically add a pinch of salt here to help draw out the moisture from those onions. This slightly helps reduce the oil necessary, but more importantly, helps the onions keep shape for our salad. Because of that particular C shape that we cut them in, they're gonna become like these onion noodle things at this point, which are really good. We do keep the onions on for about three or four minutes, which means the garlic also is on for about three or four minutes. So once again, it's very important to keep that spatula just swimming and flipping between the ingredients. Not the whole time, just in a reasonable frequency. You get your other ingredients in there shortly after and then your seasonings. As for the seasonings, the sugar in there is actually completely optional. But you know, let me go backwards for a second. Sumac onions are typically made with red onions as it's being pickled and eaten in a raw state. Since we're choosing to cook our onions, I went with sweet onions for two reasons. One, because sweet onions are sweeter in flavor and that helps complement that tanginess that you get from the sumac seasoning and the red wine vinegar. Two, um, what was two again? Oh yeah, red onions tend to get more gray as you cook them, and that can look less appetizing in a recipe like this. Coming back to why the sugar is optional. With the onions holding a general amount of sweetness in them already, it could be sufficient for your needs and also help balance that tang. Or you could use red onions and just add a little sugar and or no sugar and just who cares what they look like? If you don't have red wine vinegar, you could swap that for balsamic vinegar. If you don't have cilantro, you could swap that for parsley. If you don't have basil, go get some. Just pause the video right here, leave the house and get some. Sometimes those little things just make the biggest difference. That is a cooking lesson I've learned from my mom a million times over. At the end, red cabbage is added in as a fresh take or an unseasoned counterpart. Just mellows things out. Some other good options to finish everything off could be carrots or celery or even some lettuce to bring it towards a more traditional salad look. This recipe can be found linked in the description or at my website, makeitdairyfree.com. Thank you so much for hanging out. Until next time, believe in good. Peace.